Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a hemostat mandala, but I'm going to use hot water irrigation. The shirt was prepped like normal and I have it turned inside out. I'm going to start by centering the shirt because I want to put the mandala both on the front and the back of the shirt. So this process is going to go really fast. But down below in the description for this video is a link to another video which shows how to center a shirt. Essentially what I'm doing is getting both sides of the front of the shirt next to each other and both sides of the back of the shirt next to each other. That way whenever I apply the dye and I do any process to the shirt, both sides of the front should look more symmetrical and both sides of the back should look more symmetrical. Now that the shirt is centered, I'm going to use a washable marker and place a mark where I'd like for the center of my mandala to be. I usually like to place mine just a little bit below the armpit of the shirt. Then I'm going to place my finger on that line and fold the hem of the shirt up. I'm going to grab the hem again and fold it back down part way, kind of starting like an airplane type fold. Then I'm going to pinch that seam Lift the shirt up off of the table and fold it in half. The side of the shirt that's facing me has two folds. And I'm going to fold each side of the shirt one more time. So right now I have an eight point mandala. I'm not going to put any more folds in the shirt because I need to be able to clamp the hemostats down on the shirt and if I add any more folds it'll be too thick for me to do that. If you were tying this shirt in a different way using sinew or some other product you could fold each side again and that would make a 16 point mandala. For this shirt I'm going to use straight hemostats and the majority of my hemostats are 10 inch and 12 inch. I'm going to place one hemostat right down at the very end going diagonally. For the rest of the shirt, I'm going to place the hemostats in pairs. I'm starting with the 10 inch hemostats and I'm going to continue using 10 inch hemostats until I either run out of them or until the shirt gets so thick that I need to switch over to 12 inch. I have each one of my hemostats coated with some heat shrink tubing. I purchased this at Lowe's or Home Depot and I place a piece of heat shrink tubing on the teeth of the hemostats and then use my heat gun to shrink it down to fit. The heat shrink tubing helps to protect the teeth of the hemostats from damaging the fabric. It also kind of helps make a tighter bond on the shirt. One bonus as well is when I go to clean up the hemostats, it makes it very easy to clean them. I'm starting out by spraying the top of the shirt with a spray bottle that has a little bit of soda ash solution inside. This is going to help the dye adhere to the fabric a little bit better and not fall off of the sides. I also have the shirt on top of a towel in preparation for the hot water irrigation process. 
I'm starting at the very end or the center of the mandala with pure magenta from dye spin. I'm also going to add a little bit of pure magenta into one of the sections formed by the hemostats. In the remaining sections on this one side, I'm going to add cotton candy from Pro Chemical and Dye and Huckleberry from Dye Spin. Then on the other side, I'm going to add True Purple from Grateful Dyes, as well as True Violet from Grateful Dyes and Vintage Purple from Dye Spin. In the remaining area, I'm going to use Wisteria and Sweet Pea from Dharma Trading Company. I wanted a couple of softer dye colors in this area. Now I'm going to put a pretty generous sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the dye. I've already soaked the shirt in soda ash, but because I'm going to hot water irrigate it, I want to put a little bit more than I normally do over the top. I'm going to force quite a bit of water through this shirt. I'm also going to spray the shirt one more time with the soda ash solution that I have in the spray bottle. I'm going to take this shirt outside and I don't want the dye blowing around. To heat up my water for hot water irrigation, I'm using a sous vide wand and a container, which I purchased both of these from Amazon and I have links down below in the description. Then for the hot water irrigation part, I'm using a sprayer which I purchased at Walmart. I heated the water to 160 degrees and I've taken the shirt outside and I'm going to just gently spray it with the hot water. I'm going to give it a spray with water and then wait a couple seconds and let the water soak into the shirt. I'm going to continue this process until it looks like the dye is dissolved on top and that the dye has gone all the way through to the back side. After I'm finished doing the hot water irrigation process, I left the shirt for about 15 to 20 minutes just to give it time for the dye and everything to soak into the shirt. Then I took the shirt to my utility sink and I started rinsing it in cold water. I took the hemostats off the shirt and rinsed it in hot water until the water was running almost clear. Then I put the shirt into my washing machine and I washed it on a hot water cycle with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent. After it was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. 
Okay, so what do you guys think? So I love the hemostat part with the purple and the pink and the alternating between the two colors. I think that looks great. I'm not so excited about the part that is all in between the hemostats. I didn't get great color saturation on part of that area. I know the fold was really thick and I used a very light color of purple and a very light color of pink with the wisteria and the sweet pea. I wanted softer colors, but I actually wanted them to show up. And I kind of learned a lesson with this. Those are not great colors to use for hot water irrigation. I've had much better success with those really light colors, just using them as a liquid, not using them for ice dye or anything out of the ordinary. If you remember when I applied the dye, I applied all the purple colors to one side of the shirt and all the pink colors to the other side. So then on the finished product, the pink and purple alternate down the shirt, which I think is a cool effect. So I really like the shirt, but I am disappointed that the top half of the shirt is not as dark as the bottom half. The bottom half is the part which was out on the outside and that top half was the half or the part of the shirt which was on the inside. Like I said, I don't think it looks terrible, but I really wish it was either all white or all colored. I can't even see the sweet pea at all. And the wisteria is not very dark either. There's just a little hint of it on the bottom half. But as far as the design goes, I really like the design. And if you all have learned anything from the video or you've enjoyed watching it, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.